Hi everyone. Today we are presenting our paper How fast is my software? A latency evaluation for ROS2 autonomous driving software. This research was presented at IB2023 and it's a joint research work of TU Munich AVS Lab and the Technische Universität of Dortmund. When we look at autonomous driving systems, we find out that these vehicles need to operate predictably and safely. We only can achieve that while taking care of the algorithms, taking care of hardware and taking care of the timing of the software. The software stacks used must process sensor data in real time, which includes processing a large amount of data using various algorithms and the communication between each system component. When we look at autonomous driving software, we see a heavy variety of software modules. We see perception, we see planning, and we see control. And when we look at it, we need to combine these modules to run fast and reliable. One main metric to identify the reliability and the speed of the software stack is the end-to-end -end latency. The end-to-end -end latency, per definition, is the time between receiving the input data from the first node and sending the output values in the last node of the concerted compute path. This means we are receiving sensor data, we are calculating the behavior and the plan, and we control the vehicle all on given hardware. And that's exactly the time we want to measure. We can see that a little bit in detail in the simplified example of the system components, where we see that when we send something, we need time to process, then do the localization, need some time to process, plan the path, need some time to process, and then control the vehicle. All of that takes time. Right now, everybody focused so far on response time analysis. We see some DDS analysis and inter-process communication, as well as some end-to-end -end latencies. When we looked at the literature, we identified the research gap with a detailed end-to-end -end latency analysis, which is missing right now. Number two, we are focusing on a software-hardware combination to provide a focus on full autonomous driving software stacks. Therefore, by identifying a research gap, we hope with our work, we can build a framework for everybody to make latency investigations applicable. And number two, we provide an analysis for the end-to-end -end latency for different configurations on a given reference software. So what we did in this paper, we set up an evaluation setup for latency analysis. Number one, we are taking a simulation environment called AWSIM from the Autoware Foundation. Number two, we are using a full autonomous driving software stack called Autoware. Number three, we are using specific simulation hardware. And number four, we are using real world in vehicle computation hardware. By combining all these together, we can analyze the application, we can analyze ROS2, we can analyze the middleware, DDS, and the operating system on a given hardware, and therefore conclude our latency evaluation. With this methodology, we will then analyze the whole system given. What we then do, in addition, we provide a specific ROS2 analyzing system, which we developed and presented in another paper. This is called ROS2 tracing. What we do here is do a static code analysis and then provide a data flow graph. Ultimately, with this setup and the simulation environment provided, we have the chance to get information of four different times. We get the time analysis of the end-to-end -end time, the idle time, the communication time, and therefore then the computation time. And with this, we can now provide a detailed analysis of all given times in the ROS2 autonomous driving software. You can see that in detail in this environment here. First of all, we have the LiDAR node. The LiDAR node needs to process data coming from the LiDAR. We then move into number two, the localization node, from localization node into the planning node, from the planning node into the controller node. What you see here, if we start in the beginning at the LiDAR and come to the end, we will see in green our end-to-end -end latency. This is the overall time the whole software stack needs to process one computation step and therefore can calculate an action command. Then we see in addition here in orange, the idle time between nodes. For example, 
in the LiDAR node, moving from sub LiDAR to the localization, moving from a sub localization to planning and moving from sub planning to control. This is time where nothing happens. Then number three, we see the computation time in one node, the time it needs to process the LiDAR and the callback learn time. And therefore we have calculated the whole computation time in one LiDAR. The last time which is missing now is the DDS time and therefore our time in the middleware needs to move on to the next node. And in this picture, you see the whole and everything of the times we need to calculate in order to provide a detailed end to end latency of our autonomous driving software. Ultimately, what we can show in our results when we were analyzing the software, we see different times. Number one, we see an end to end time of a mean value of 152 milliseconds. This means in a mean and average 152 milliseconds, we need the time to process from sensing to control output, which is a good value, but shows time to improvement. We exactly see time of improvement, especially in the idle times. What you can see here, the idle times are very high. We could show that the idle time occupies the largest portion of our end to end latency and therefore shows time for optimization. We did that by providing an additional investigation of software and hardware layers. Number one, we increased the timer frequency to reduce the idle latency up to 40 Hertz before saturation. And we could show that if we increase the timer frequency up to 40 Hertz, we can reduce the idle latency. Number two, we did a comparison of two different middleware. We use Cyclone DDS and Fast DDS. And we could show that fast DDS consistently is faster than Cyclone DDS and see an up to 15% improvement using static asynchronous mode. Number three, we did a comparison of different schedulers. We used first input, first output and round rabbit and first come first serve schedulers. And we could show that we see an outperformance of round rabbit for CFS, CFS by around 6%. Last but not least, we did an investigation of the CPU clock frequency and could show that a constant clock frequency improves the latency up to 15% and therefore have a high variety of where we can improve our latency analysis. Ultimately, we could show that further improvements of ROS2 and especially our software, AutoWare Universe, um, is, is doable by having either different clock frequencies or different frequencies where the software is running on. Then we could show that we see some idle times which are high due to a number of factors such as the ROS2 executors. We can reduce these idle times by having a higher frequency. In the future, what we will do is have an evaluation of different computation parts for scenarios with dynamic objects. Then second, do an investigation of the end-to-end -end latency behavior of ROS2 systems and number three, develop new methods that are needed to realize real-time guarantees for ROS2 applications. The key takeaway of this paper is that we provide here a framework for the analysis of latency behavior for hardware and an investigation of different software letters. Thank you very much for your attention. We provide you here with QR code, a link to the paper, a link to our GitHub code, and then a link to our lab website. Thank you very much.